Monday, January 23, 2017. Welcome to the Government News Brief. In the news, the President says Guyana has the potential to produce quality foods for the Eastern Caribbean region. The management of the Guyana Sugar Corporation says change in production is necessary to cover overhead expenses and persons traveling to and from the Northwest District are asked to remain patient as the government works to acquire the new ferry. Stay tuned for these and other stories. Thank you for staying with us. I am Renette LaFleur. Here are the details. President David Granger is convinced that Guyana has the potential to produce quality foods for every industry in the Eastern Caribbean. Gabriela Patram tells us more. Speaking on his weekly program, Public Interest, President Granger says that Guyanese need to start demanding more local products when they go shopping. President Granger says this is the first step to ensure that the country starts to support local producers. I am very convinced that Guyana could produce practically every commodity that is required in the hospitality industries in the Eastern Caribbean. Um, every egg, every avocado pear, every fish, every, you know, pak choy, bit of pak choy, bora, anything we want, tomatoes. So that is the way to go, green. The second step, the president says, relates to the manufacturing sector. The president notes that companies should try to move away from importing. We would like to encourage the manufacturing sector to uh, understand that many farmers can produce the commodities that we need. We don't need to buy plantain chips from Central America or from uh, uh, other countries. We can make plantain chips here, make potato chips here. Or fish and chip shops, we can produce sweet potato chips. The president notes that Guyanese need to move away from the overseas mentality when it comes to products, and once this happens, progress will be made. For the Government News Brief, Gabriela Patram. The management of the Guyana Sugar Corporation says the company will be unable to cover its overhead expenses if there is no change in production. Delicia Haynes has the details. The board of directors and management of the Guyana Sugar Corporation continues to stress the need for the diversification of the sugar industry. Chief Executive Officer of the Corporation, Errol Hanneman, says that for a number of years, sugar production performance and poor prices on the world market have led to the industry incurring significant losses. It is our firm view that for far too many years in Gaisuko, too few dollars have been chasing too many acres. And what effectively we have been doing is running the good estates down to keep the poor performance going. And what that effectively means is that uh, they're all now run down in differing degrees. We have sacrificed the good performers to keep the poor performance going. Losses incurred by the industry are recorded at $17.5 billion in 2014, $18.1 billion in 2015, and $12.1 billion in 2016. Hanneman adds that if there is no change in the organizational structure and production is not diversified, projected losses for 2017 stands at $13.7 billion. Hanneman says that with world sugar prices averaging U.S. 19.84 cents per pound, the industry will not be able to cover its overhead production costs of U.S. 36.6 cents per pound. Now, even though we are talking about certain, some huge uh, deficits and subsidies, I hasten to add that this level of uh, subsidization does not take into consideration the servicing of debts. And Gaisuko over the years have also been using creditors to finance its operations. So we have not been servicing our debt to our creditors as well. We have not been paying our NIS, we have not been paying the GRA, we have not been paying the Guyana uh, lands and surveys, we have not been paying the local authorities, we have been paying the Gawu, the uh, Jews, and uh, we're behind on that. The government has been consulting with stakeholders to determine a way forward with the industry. A commission of inquiry into the current state of Gaisuku was conducted in 2015 and laid in the National Assembly. The report of the COI recommended the privatization, incorporation, and regulation of the industry under the Companies Act. The COI also recommended that Gaisuko's management focus on basic essentials to rehabilitate the fields, factories, and infrastructure of the corporation. For the Government News Brief, I am Delicia Haynes. 
Minister within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure is asking persons who travel to and from Northwest Region 1 to remain patient as the process to acquire a new ferry continues to move ahead. Zanil Williams reports. Minister within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, Annette Ferguson, says the design for the new ferry is currently with manufacturers for construction works to commence. Ferguson says the process is not an easy one and will take time. With the procurement of a vessel, it, take, it will take some amount of time because it is not a case whereby you get the money today and you can go to the ship yeah, tomorrow and procure a vessel. You, first, you have to have a design, which we have, right? And it was shared with, the, um, with our suppliers there. So they will now have to manufacture based on the design and its specifications. So it will take some time. In November 2016, the government signed a U.S. $18 million line of credit agreement with the Export-Import Bank of India for the procurement of an ocean ferry to service the Georgetown to Northwest District route. Sums were allocated in the 2017 budget for the procurement process, Minister Ferguson says. Yes, the government of Guyana and that of India would have inked um, an agreement to have um, the procurement of a new ferry vessel. Um, I know in a in budget 2017, we have um, 85 million US dollars budgeted there. So um, hopefully before 2017, at least we should see some movements in that regard. Meanwhile, Minister Ferguson says currently there are no ferries in dock, but later this year, the MV Lady North Coat, MV Sandaka, and MV Malali will undergo maintenance work to improve services to residents. Those three vessels will be docked in 2017. Where are we at at this point in time, you know, we have to go out to um, public tender. So I guess by next month, February, we should have those tenders out, return for evaluation, and then we'll see the work's being done. The public infrastructure minister says the government will enhance the livelihood of people who depend on water transport for their goods and other commercial commodities, but reiterates the need for patience. Zanil Williams for the Government News Brief. The proposed regional flags were presented at the inaugural meeting of the National Regional Development Consultative Committee. The occasion presented an opportunity for discussion to move forward with the designs of the regional emblem. Paul McAdam has the details. Minister of Communities Ronald Balkan says the intention is to commence displaying the flags at government's buildings across the regions for public discourse and feedback. What is going to happen from here on is that these flags, which are specimens, uh, will be displayed at all of the ministry's buildings. Ministry of Communities, that is, and all RDC buildings will also uh, be displayed at Parliament Square and it will be publicized during the Marshall Money celebrations. The discussions have to start meaningfully in our regions um, to invite feedback. The minister is optimistic that the decision can be made on the final designs of the flag within four months. We hope for a decision to be made by the end of April this year. So the work plan that we have is that the RDC has to work uh, to ensure the completion of the, uh, those consultations and discussion to arrive at a point to make a resolution whether they want or each region will have uh, their own ability to for now keep the existing name or to move to a different name to adopt the specimen of the flag um, and to arrive at the symbol that will be part of that flag. The regional emblems and renaming the 10 administrative regions are part of the efforts of the government to foster regional empowerment and pride. These efforts, however, have been opposed by the parliamentary opposition. Minister Balkan says, however, that the administration will not be deterred. This administration has a vision for meaningful local administration and in this regard, the concept of strong regions is essential. And this is what brings us to uh, the need and necessity for each region 
to have their own flag, symbol and standard. The National Regional Development Consultative Committee meeting was held at the Marriott Hotel on Friday, January 20, 2017. Paul McCallum for the Government News Brief. Divisional Commander of A Division has launched a new initiative for youths in the Police Youth Group. Neola Damon tells us more. Police Youth Groups will provide training to help young people market their products within three months. Divisional Commander Clifton Hicken says shifting youth into entrepreneurship will assist in branding communities to bridge a relationship between the police and communities. He says that parents are very interested in the initiative. Today's event was conceptualized during the review of last year, clean of activities for the youth development process. Uh, we have been working to do skill training every Saturday, but looking at the community needs, we recognize that added to the skill training, there is an urgent need for young entrepreneurs because it helps them to think out of the box too. And we decided that um, we are going to give recognition to the communities in which these children belong by branding. The youth prepared a variety of local items at the launch-in. Commander Hicken says that the initiative will develop young entrepreneurship skills. Malika Hollinsworth of Tamiri Nord Action Group says she learned a great deal from the program since she joined six months ago. From this part of youth group, I've been learning a lot, such as how to make math, doing sewing, and I've been on a camping out, and I learned lots of things while I was camping. Like I learned to make decorative doll and bridal doll through a flower petal and I saw lots of I communicate with lots of other lots of other action children from other parts of groups and I really learn a lot like camping a lot more and I hope that somebody could join me someday to explore the rest that is still there too. Commander Hicken notes that stakeholders are drawn to the initiative created to highlight the youth hard work. The youths will showcase their products at Guy Expo 2017 as part of the effort to expand their businesses. Neil Damon for Government News Brief. We have come to the end of today's edition of the Government News Brief. The details of these and other stories can be found on Gina's website. Gina has an active Facebook page and we encourage you to visit and like us so you can be informed as the news unfolds. You can also visit our website and YouTube channels. Do join us tomorrow for another edition of the Government News Brief. I am Renetta LaFleur. Thank you for watching.